Turnham-on-Sea, Somerset, the home of Michael Turner, the teacher of GCSE Geography. An ideal video on my home back doorstep of showing you constructive waves. The proof is, you've got a beach. And these waves are clearly flat. They have a strong swash of pushing sediment up the beach. You can see the weed at the shoreline there. And you can see that the waves going back out to sea, the backwash, is fairly weak. So it's a constructive wave system here. We've got seven miles of beach, Burnham on Sea to Green Down, which is way in the background. If we swing the camera west out to the sea, that's where the wind's coming from today. We've got this wind propelling the sea right behind the waves. And if we look over here and do a wave count, I think we're going to see more waves per minute than what the books say. Seven or eight per minute for constructive waves. We'll do the clock starting now. We'll do it for a minute. We can count the waves in the minute. That's 15 seconds. seconds. Forty five. Sixty seconds. This is a video showing you constructive wave that built a beach seven miles long. Another topic that it raises is you'll see that the color of the sea isn't very attractive, it's muddy. And that means this river estuary, this channel, is constantly carrying clay in suspension. So the water is clean. We've got, we haven't got saltation here, the jumping of stones. We haven't got tracturing of boulders because there aren't any. And we've got solution, waves carrying solution and suspension. What makes this video interesting on this spring tide is you'll see the flood defences in Burnham-on-Sea because in about an hour and a half's time the waves are going to be slamming into that wall. Now the textbooks tell us that hard engineering like building a sea wall is very expensive but I think it's a minor disadvantage because this sea wall can last 150 years. That means it's pretty cheap for the job that it will do because we had a Victorian sea wall until the 1980s and sometimes we get water running down the sea front into the town centre and down the other side of the shopping centre into the residential area. We don't get that anymore. And they say in some geography books that the weakness of a sea wall is the waves will undercut the base. Well the engineers were one step ahead of that thought here because what they've done, they've put steps and that means the wave power is broken up by the steps, so the energy is dissipated once the waves start beating into the steps. And when the water is really high and it's beaten over the top of the steps, you'll see that the profile of the wall is rounded. So that means that the waves will fall back on themselves and return to the sea. So this is Burnham-on-Sea, Somerset, England. 
exactly three degrees west of Greenwich, which means we're 12 miles, 12 minutes I should say, behind Greenwich mean time. So if it's 8 o'clock at night in Greenwich, it's going to be 7.57 here, exact time-wise. And we've got the second highest rise and fall of tide in the world here. The highest is in Newfoundland. We can get up to 40 feet of tidal range here. And this is a spring tide, boys and girls. We used to learn about this in geography, which we moved to physics. In brief, when the sun and moon are opposite each other on opposite sides of the earth, or on the same side of the earth, their gravitational pull is combined. And that's where you get a high swelling or a bulge of water on that particular side of the planet, bringing in all this water. And it's quite a phenomenon here being in Burnham on Sea because six hours earlier, this beach had a huge expanse of sand and mud strata, and it was completely empty. This estuary here in Burnham on Sea was completely devoid of water. And now it's filling furiously. And this is what makes the tide here at Burnham on Sea very dangerous. People could be swept along very fast with the currents and drown. The tide will take about six hours to come in. The first two hours the tide is speeding up. Then hours three and four, it's very, very fast. Then it starts slowing down towards high water. And then when the tide recedes, it starts to ebb slowly, then speeds up to the third and fourth hour before slowing down to the fifth and sixth hour. So these are constructive waves at Burnham on Sea, which children learn about in GCSE geography. One of the reasons why they are constructive waves is because, although the sun's in the way here, on the left of the picture you've got the north coast of Somerset towards Minehead, and over to the north you've got the coast of South Wales. So the tidal fetch, the distance that the wind blows over water to accumulate the energy, the rolling balls of water, is limited. So we're never going to have destructive waves unless it's a storm. Maybe it takes a bit of sand away, but by and large it soon is replenished. I need to go down to the south coast of England one day to photograph or film the destructive waves. And you'll know that they're destructive because you can stand in the water like these people are paddling and you'll feel the sand or the gravel being pulled across your ankles as the waves are in the motion of backwashing and the beach profile is steeper. Here it's fairly shallow so you'll see lots of waves here and I think one of the reasons we're seeing more waves than eight waves a minute is because the beach profile is very shallow so it's causing the water to break with greater frequency. So I hope students you find this video somewhat enlightening.